Let's say we have a scenario where we measure the mass of an object as the independent variable, and then we record its speed after undergoing some kind of a procedure, and so speed is the dependent variable. And for whatever reason, <clears throat> the scenario creates a crazy kind of equation like this. Now, this equation doesn't actually make any sense. If you were to try and work out the units, you would realize there's no possible way for units to work out. But let's put all of that aside and just assume that this is the equation, okay? If I do my experiment, there's a nice way to process my data to try and create a straight line graph and to try to figure out what the relationship is between mass and speed. I mean, my question says, my research question says, how does the speed of whatever the object is depend on the mass you know, when, and then I kind of outline just the basics of the experiment. But really I'm saying, how does speed depend on mass? What's the relationship, what's the mathematical equation between speed and mass? So I can develop an experimental equation that is based on this uh, theoretical equation. Specifically, I will have measurements of V, I will have measurements of M, and according to this equation, the square root of V should be proportional to m over km minus pi. Now, you might think like, oh, gee, isn't there a simpler way to write this? Uh, but when you have something like in the numerator and denominator like this, this would be the simplest way possible. <clears throat> so, uh, so you can't simplify any further. And that's the proportionality we expect. If you put this on the y-axis, if you make that your y and you make this your x, oops, then now what you'll have is, <clears throat> you'll have y is equal to this times x, and so this whole mess right here should be the slope of the graph, where y-axis is radical v, x-axis is this whole mess. So for every mass that I've got in my data, I'll have to calculate, you know, do a column and calculate this. Okay, so here's my data. Here's the theoretical equation. Let's say that in this experiment, k is equal to 4. Here's some uh, data that we've recorded. These values fluctuate randomly, so I have created some random error. Here are my masses. I did three repeated, value, uh, three repeated trials at each mass, and then I averaged the three speeds together. And then here, <clears throat> for the uncertainty, I've got the maximum of the three minus the minimum of the three divided by two. Um, that's of course my y-axis uncertainty, and so the you know so these are speed is my y-axis here it is, and then my x-axis uncertainty is just this value plus or minus 0 0.01 grams. Okay, <clears throat> when I um, take these masses and I calculate that crazy fraction and I square it, here's what I get. So I've done that process. I've also square rooted all of the speeds, or raised it to the 0.5 power, and notice my units as well. This I failed to include units. <clears throat> By the way, this is just um, what I did is in, in my Word document, I simply copied, <clears throat> I copied just this, control C, and then I come into Excel, I click off onto a random cell, control V, and it will paste a picture so I can put that in. I just need to make sure I've got my units in parentheses as well. Okay, so if I make this plot, <clears throat> let's make the plot. Um, the x error bars are going to be different. I'm <clears throat> my y-axis is now this. My x-axis is now this. Let me fix my reset this. And it's relatively straight, reasonably straight, right? So this is now final function maybe, or process data. And no longer is this speed, this is like speed to the 0.5, and I need to do the same for my units. Right, and then this is, what do I call this? Well, you could just copy and paste this uh, picture. You know, move this graph, move this up, delete the x-axis title, and then paste it like that. That works, that's fine. 
uh, or you could just call it x prime, you know, and then include the units and explain somewhere in your report what x prime really means, what that is. Um, <clears throat> but for now, I'll just whoops, I'll just copy it like that. Okay, so I'm going to need to add a trend line, and if I double click, display the equation. All right, there it is. So if I replace y with radical v. I could replace x with this whole thing, m over km minus pi, all squared, and this is my equation, right? That's the function I've just developed. So notice that I it didn't go through the origin like I expected. Hopefully, 2.4, hopefully that's equal to uh, this, because that's what we expected the slope to be, um, but who knows. And <clears throat> so now I need to figure out what my x-axis error bars are, right? I mean... After all, these x values on this graph, the x values is this column. Each of these values came from a mass, didn't it? So each of these values has some uncertainty based on the mass uncertainty, this point plus or minus 0 0.01 grams. Um, now it also came from this value k. Maybe k has uncertainty. Maybe I'm going to say, you know what? Uh, it's too complicated to propagate the uncertainty, so therefore I'm just going to ignore the uncertainty in K and exclusively focus on the uncertainty in mass. You know, to simplify, sometimes that's justified, that's fine to do. Um, I'm going to show you, first, here's the equation, right? Oops, let's move forward. Um, the equation is, my x values, my new x values are uh, mass over km, oops, mass over km minus pi squared. So there are propagation rules. I need to know the absolute uncertainty in this mess. Now, <clears throat> we have a rule that says whenever you square something, you multiply the percent uncertainty in what you're squaring. So percent in m over km minus pi, multiply that by the power. And that will give you the percent uncertainty in the squared quantity. In other words, this is the percent uncertainty in my, uh, in this whole mess right here. Let's move this over. Okay, all right, that's a start, right? Equals. So we would keep going. We would say, okay, uh, well, so what's the, how can we simplify this and figure out what that equals? Well, uh, you've got a numerator and a denominator, and there's a rule that says whenever you divide, add the percent uncertainties to get the new percentage. So we're looking for the total percentage in the whole fraction, and our propagation rule says add the uncertainty in the numerator with the uncertainty in the denominator, km minus pi. Okay, this uncertainty is really easy. We know what that is. That is simply going to be the absolute uncertainty in m, the 0.01, divided by the value of m. This uncertainty is more complicated <clears throat> because... It's the absolute uncertainty in km minus pi over the value of km minus pi, right? Uh, well, okay, let's keep going then. And we apply our rules. We proceed. Uh, okay, km minus pi. Well, Pi has no uncertainty because it's known exactly. So we can ignore that altogether, and now we just need to know the uncertainty in k times m. But remember, when you multiply values together, we're supposed to multiply, uh, sorry, add their percent uncertainties, like this. But what this gives us is a percentage plus a percentage. It gives us the total percent uncertainty in the product k times m. We need the absolute uncertainty in the product k times m. 
How do we turn this percent into an absolute uncertainty? We multiply by the value of k times m. In other words, the percent in k times m is equal to the absolute in k times m over the value. So we cross multiply, and that's where this comes from. It's the value times the percentage. And we're going through and we're applying these rules and we're doing it all and it's just like so much work. Um, and <clears throat> is that it? Are we done? Well, the left side of the equation is the percent in this whole mess. But remember, every percent uncertainty is the absolute uncertainty in the mess. So what is it? M over km minus pi. Absol every percentage is the absolute uncertainty. I'm having issues with my touch screen. Let's move this down. Divide divided by the value m over km minus pi, like this. So if I'm looking for the absolute uncertainty, and I am, because that's what we put on the x-axis, the uh, uh, as the error bars, the absolute uncertainty, I have to cross multiply by the denominator. And so this gives me my final answer, the absolute uncertainty in mass over km minus pi is two times this whole thing over km minus pi multiplied by the value <clears throat> m over km minus pi squared. Now that is a mess and deriving it and then executing it with no errors is really, really hard. And it's going to, I mean, how much space in my IA will it take just to explain all of this mess? So there is a second way forward. Here is the second way to avoid using the, the traditional propagation rules. <clears throat> now, first of all, let me just say, one simplification you could make is you could say, let me forego the uncertainty in K and say, okay, this is going to be too hard to consider the uncertainty in k. Um, and so maybe I'm going to focus on mass, my independent variable. And so now all I care about is the uncertainty in m over m squared, uh, because this effectively has no contribution. And that's a lot simple. It's the percent in m plus the percent in m. And then I take that percent in the fraction, multiply it by the power, the like that, right? And this is the new percentage, so my final step is to multiply by uh, the value that is uncertain, which is this whole mess. And so now the uncertainty piece is, is exclusively coming from the mass. Um, so, you know, what is this? This is actually just four. This simplifies because that plus that is two of them, and then you've got two more right there. So it's four times delta m over m. So that's one, that's another approach. Um, but let me show you how to do this finally, one last, a third approach using Excel. Um, I'm going to use, here's my calculation for the fraction. I'm going to go into the cell. I've clicked in, I've copied, highlighted, control C is copy. Uh, I am going to find the max, let me just call that thing like, uh, I'm just going to call it x prime and then max, and I'm going to make that a subscript. That whole mess, <clears throat> this whole thing is now just being called x prime for whatever reason, I just feel like that works. I'm going to double click, paste. Okay, that's the formula. And then this B7, where I have my mass, let me just add some spaces to make this clear, I'm going to add the uncertainty because it's, it's you know, it's not just 0.50, it's 0.50 plus or minus 0.01. This could be 0.51, it could be 0.49. Let me make it 0.51. Then I come down here. Um, what do I have to do to increase the fraction. Well, 
I'm increasing the numerator, and I'm, I want to decrease the denominator, right? So subtract the uncertainty, 0.01, and I hit Enter. And then I double click the corner box and I copy this down. Now I'm going to find the minimum possible value based on my uncertainty. Again, notice I'm ignoring k and its uncertainty, but I don't necessarily have to. If I know its uncertainty, I could put 3.8 here. You know, if it's 4 plus or minus 0.2, keep going. See, uh, oh, let's see, no, that was wrong. I would want to put 4.2 to get a bigger value. Yeah, so it takes a little bit of fiddling. Let me see, if I put plus here, oh, plus makes it bigger. And if I put minus, that doesn't, no. Okay, so you have to fiddle around a little bit to see you know, what combination of adding and subtracting. Here, in this case, it happens to be adding both gives me the biggest uncertainty um, for whatever reason. There is a reason, it's because four times m is less than pi, so anyway. Um, but you have to play around sometimes to figure out what's the right combination of operations. Okay, I'm going to copy this. So I go into the cell, like double click, highlight everything, control C, hit escape. I go here, I click in, control V. Now let's do subtract, like this. And then we double click the box to drag it down. And now the uncertainty, whoops in x, uh, x prime, isn't that what I'm calling it? x prime is just going to be, let me make this delta, is just going to be the biggest of the two minus the smallest of the two divided by two. And I copy that down and I give it one sig fig because it's absolute uncertainty. And then I round uh, basically all of these values to the same decimal place. Oops, here we go. To the same decimal place. They shouldn't have more decimal places than their uncertainty. They shouldn't have fewer decimal places. They should have the exact same number of places um, as where the uncertainty is rounded. OK. And now that's what I can use as my x-axis error bars, right? So let's double click on the error bars. And then I'm going to click on, there's a cool trick. You can click on this down button, uh, this down arrow. <clears throat> and there is no x-axis error bars option. So let me go back, hit the plus, error bars. Uh, I've got to start all over. OK, so the x-axis error bars, I double click, custom, specify value. It's plus or minus this whole thing. Let's see. I need to go down to seven to eleven. Plus or minus that. I hit OK. Uh, okay, that's kind of high, but hey, you know it is what it is. <clears throat> uh, maybe, maybe I have overestimated my uncertainty. The absolute uncertainty in my y-axis. That's gonna be. Well, it's not this anymore. Oh, no, no. We have to propagate. Um, you know what? Let me actually go ahead and preemptively say I'm going to put that new uncertainty here. And again, I'm going to put that new uncertainty right here. And then once I have the values, it'll update. OK, so now I need the uncertainty in average speed to the 0.5 power. Because remember, if you raise something to the 0.5 power, the uncertainty is now different. So what's the rule? What's the rule if you raise it to the power of 0.5? Um, well, we have to take the absolute uncertainty in speed, which is different for every speed, divide by the value of average speed. This is the percent uncertainty in Speed, average speed. But we've raised the average speed to the 0.5, so multiply by that power. And what do we have now? We have the new percent uncertainty in speed to the 0.5. But we don't want the percent uncertainty in speed to the 0.5. We want the absolute uncertainty in speed to the 0.5. So we have to measure uh, multiply by the value itself of speed to the 0.5. Here it is. And I copy that down. 
and I should get my error bars. Yeah, they automatically filled in because I was clever and I selected those cells even though there was nothing in them. And so that's it. That's that's how we, and then we know we go through the process shown in another video of um, adding, now that we have all of our error bars, only now can we go add our max and min slopes. And the other video does a better job of explaining this procedure. You know, you want to visualize the error box, the whole box. So there's maybe my maximum slope, add another um, another line for your minimum slope. And I'm looking at this thinking, you know, I've got some pretty big uncertainty if this was actually my experiment. Um, at least my error bars would be quite large. Yeah, they would. Uh, I'm sorry, pardon me. My slope uncertainty would be quite large. My actual percent differences would be quite small because so much of my, um, let me add grid lines. Yeah, so much of my random error that occurred across the three trials, like look at how different these three trials are. That's a lot of random error. 0.43 and 0.15, that's a huge error bar. And it doesn't get much better if you, you know, keep digging down. So yeah, there was a lot of fluctuation, but it, it canceled out when I took an average. And that's why the data points are so close to the line. So my slope uncertainty is going to look huge because that's a pre-average uh, measure of my random error, but my percent differences are going to look pretty good. So how do I find the percent differences? Again, there's another video. Percent difference in V uh, to the 0.5. Superscript. Well, first we're going to need... Um, Let's see, before we do this, and this is good to show because instead of showing the other video, oops, can't move that graph because the error, the lines don't move. Um, this is a good thing to show because if you have a scenario where your y-axis has been adjusted to the power of 0.5 or whatever else it may be, um, here's, here's what you have to do. Predicted value of v to the 0.5, and that should have units, you know, meters, Maybe I just do predicted v to the 0.5. And then I put my units, of course. Um, I'm not gonna go through this whole process, but you know, it's the meters, it's this. Can I, let me just copy this over. Predicted, that's it. <clears throat> okay, um, and then, uh, and then I have percent difference in v to the 0.5. So here, I need to use the equation I see to figure out the y value for each of my experimental x's. Okay, so I say equals, and then what's my slope? 2.4085. That's what I got experimentally. Multiply by my x. Uh, what is my x-axis? It's, it's this. And then I add my intercept, point. 0194, I hit enter. That's the predicted value of v to the 0.5. Let me take away some decimal places. What was my, that's what the line predicts the value should be. What's my actual value? 0.50. Now look at that first data point. The way we are used to estimating random error is to say how far above the line is that point? But you know, it's hard to tell just by looking. And look at this one. How far is that away from the from the uh, how far is that point from the line? And this one, how far is that from the line? So it's hard to tell, but now we know how far it is. It's 0.02. So let's add a cell or a column that shows the difference. Not the percent difference, just the difference. <clears throat> this should also have difference in v to the point. Uh, yes, and it has units still. So what's the difference? Well, it's we're not going to care about the positive or negative, so let's just do ABS, take the absolute value. Take the difference, hit enter. The percent difference is the difference as expressed as a percentage. Um, well, a percentage of what? We make it a percentage of the average between those values. So it's like neither one of them is quote unquote true or like the theoretical value. They're both experimental. This one is the measured. That's the one from the experimental trend line. So we just average them. 0.49 would be the denominator. 
and then we turn that into a percentage and we round it. Good. Copy, paste. Um, wow, 0%, not bad. So that is how we get our maximum slope lines. You can watch the rest of the other video to see, you know, you want to put in some dots and uh, yeah, follow, follow the other video. So that's it. Thanks for watching.